All right, so I'm gonna go over true response question four from the 2023 AP Calculus exam. Now, um, there are no official solutions out and they probably won't be out until like June or July this year. And so this will be my solution. Now, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. I'm very confident in myself. But if I make a mistake or if you're like wondering, hey, did I do something wrong? Just let me know. Give me a comment and, you know, I'll see, you know, I'll, I'll see what's going on. But um, like I said, I, sh I should get this correct. But, you know, we'll see. OK, so um, problem four, let's see what it says. So we got a function f defined on the closed interval negative 2 to 8 satisfies f of 2 being 1. The graph of f prime and the derivative of f consists of two line segments in a semicircle as shown in the figure. A, does f have a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at x equals 6? Give a reason for your answer. Well, let's, let's, let's see what's going on here. So at 6, let's put a dot there. OK, so for there to be a minimum, remember that the graph would have to be, you know, the graph of f, that is, would be decreasing before and increasing afterwards, the graph of f. This is the graph of f prime. Remember, this is the graph of f. There is a minimum. Now, if there was a maximum, it would be the opposite. f would be going up, and f would be then going down afterwards. Max, man, I don't know if I need to actually draw this, but I'm just kind of showing what I'm talking about. Now, when there's a minimum, that means the graph has a derivative that's negative before, and positive afterwards, maximum is opposite. F prime is positive before and negative afterwards. But here, the derivative is positive all along. It's positive before the whole time. So, you know, it's always increasing. It's just, inc it's just increasing by a different amount. It just basically does like, and this is just a, it's gonna, you know, kind of gets flattened now, but it still then increases afterwards at six. So there's neither relative max or min at six. And our reason, because I know they probably won't accept these drawings, reason will say because F prime is positive all around six, or maybe let's say, let's say, let's go with, because F prime is positive, let's say is always positive on and just pick an interval right around six. Let's just say always positive from, from four to eight. Before and after six. I mean, I would accept this answer, but you never know with these people. They, they have very interesting um, requirements, but Keep it simple, again, straightforward, because um, they want to just basically see that you don't get fooled with this being F. All right, so um, B, on what open intervals, if any, is the graph of F concave down? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so remember, graph is concave down when the second derivative is negative. So you can find where the second derivative is negative. That also means when the first derivative is decreasing. So you can see that directly on the graph so f prime is when f prime is decreasing by looking at where basically the graph is going downward. So um, you see from here, f prime is decreasing. Then that, and again, that's just saying f, the, the second derivative is negative because again, this, this is a negative slope. So it's decreasing on negative two to zero. It's increasing here and it's decreasing from four to six. So it's from, it's from negative two to zero and four to six. And then I, I would simply say because F prime is decreasing. F prime is decreasing on these intervals. And I'm, like, I'm guessing that your exam had more room than this. I kind of wanted to fit in there just because. All right, C, find the value of the limit of six f of x minus three x 
over x squared minus 5x plus 6 as x approaches 2. If it doesn't, I mean, or show that it does not exist and justify your answer. OK, so we always want to use direct substitution. That's always the first thing we want to do, see if it works. So now, this is the thing. I, I don't know how strict they're going to be on how you write like your solution because i know they um sometimes are a little picky on like how you write your limits in terms of you know an expression and that sort of thing so maybe just write the whole thing out each time even though it can be a little bit annoying but anyways using direct substitution um six times f of two minus three times two over two squared minus five times two plus six. Six times f of two, f of two is, is given to us as one. So six times one, so we get six minus six on top and we get four minus 10 plus six on the bottom. So we end up with zero over zero. So we have an indeterminate form. So this is going to require us needing help from the hospital. L hospitals rules. We're going to need the L hospitals rule. Lop I mean, L'Hopital's rule. Yeah, well, it's, it's spelled like L hospitals rule, literally. L hospitals. L hospitals. And we would, let's write the limits, you know, piece by piece. So, I mean, the limit on the top. Limit as x approaches 2 of six times f of x minus three x over again, the limit as x approaches two times x squared minus five x plus six. And again, I don't know how strict or how formal they want you to be with this, you know, answer. So just, just be aware of that. Um, so what we wanna do is take the derivative of the top. Taking the derivative of the top, we'll get six times f prime of two minus three over two x minus five. Now from, actually, let me leave this as, no, I mean, I guess if I put that, this is again, what I'm gonna have to look back up. If you do this, you're gonna have to directly plug that in and two times two, I guess. And from here, we work it out. Six times F prime of two. F prime of two. Let's look at what's, what um, the derivative is at two. And it's simply the, the, the Y value here. So it's zero. So we have six times zero. Oops, six times zero minus three all over four minus five. And we would get negative three over negative one. And our answer would be three. All right, and part D, find the absolute minimum value of F on the closed interval from negative two to eight, to justify your answer. All right, so this is an interesting one because, um, well, let's, let's see. Let's see what's going on. So, um. Remember, a minimum occurs when the graph is decreasing before and increasing afterwards. So looking at um, identifying, I guess, point, let's first identify um, points where, and like, again, I'm going to try to cram it in here, but I wouldn't, this is, wouldn't, again, be what the answer would be formatted in because like, obviously I should have more space, but um, look for where the F prime of, look for F prime of X is zero because we want to find critical values and see what's going on before. So then again, um, going from the, from the left, negative two, we have a negative one, we have a two and it's six and eight. Negative two, negative one, two, six and eight.
and looking at what, what's going on with F prime in this first interval, see it's decreasing, it's negative. Or sorry, no, it's positive, it's increasing. It's increasing here, positive. And then it's decreasing afterwards, negative. And then it's, in, then it's still negative here, negative, negative. What am I doing? I'm, I'm messing up here. It's negative all the way to two. I don't need to add another one. It's negative all along here. I confuse myself, negative. And then after from two to six, it's positive. And then from six to eight, it stays positive. So the graph of, you know, F, let me, um, let me wipe this out right now because I want to kind of show the, the graph of F right below. Um, F, like, again, would be increasing over here, decreasing over here. So then there's not going to be a minimum here, leave like a local max potentially, but then increasing and then increasing. So a potential minimum can occur at two. So we want to check two, but also let's check the endpoints. So check f of negative two, f of two, and then f of eight. These are only our only possibilities. Now here's the thing. We know what f of two is. F of two is equal to one. So I could kind of actually use logical reasoning, which is what math is all about. Let me actually, so let's make a little, let's make a graph here. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So two, one, zero, negative one. And I know what F of two is again, F of two is one. So F of two is one. So I have one there again. And this is the graph of F. Now you could integrate and, you know, work your way to the left and do it and, you know, work it out. And it's, it's still going to come up to the same thing as I'm going to explain. But going for, if you start here, your value is increasing. We don't know what F of negative two is yet, but we know we increase by two over that, over this first unit. Then we decrease by two. So then we end up at the same spot. F of zero is the same value as F of negative two. But let's go from negative, let's go from here. We know what this value is. If you're going backwards, this is the slope, or this is the slope of the graph of F, meaning that at one, the value basically goes up by one because when you're going from here to here, you're gonna increase, you're gonna, um, decrease by one. So at one, you have a point at, you have a point at one comma two. And then if you keep on following that at zero, your point is that, yeah, my voice just squealed or something. <laughs> at zero, your voice, again, your, my value of F goes again up by one. So I have a point at zero, three. And then up at neg when I go back to negative one, I decrease by two. So at negative one, my value is all the way at five. But then from negative one to two, I increase by two. So I bounce back up. I go back to three. So at zero, I'm at zero, three at the beginning. So working backwards, if I start if I start at three here, see I, I increase by two over that unit, then I decrease by two over that unit because again these integral values will cancel each other out, and then from here I'm decreasing by one every I'm, I'm decreasing at a rate of one over one, so see one one. And then, so I know that F of two is gonna be less than F of zero.
for this is the way I thought was easier, but I'm gonna go over kind of how you can set up your integral if you want to do if you want to show that way. How now? Now, how do you know if f of eight is gonna be greater than or less than f of two? Well, after two, since your graph of f prime is always positive, you're only gonna get bigger. Like your your value is like here. You can you can basically estimate. You know, you're going up by one every unit. So at four, you're two more. At four, you're going to be back at three. Now here you can calculate and get an approximation, but it doesn't matter because you're still increasing. You're only getting larger after this, after this point right here. You're only getting larger at two because the integral is positive. When you integrate from two to eight, you get a positive integral. So that means your value only gets bigger. So then your look, so your um, absolute min on this interval has to be at two. Has to be a two because the integral. So I'm, this is what I would write in, in, in formally. So I would write. Let's see if I can get a clean piece of paper to kind of. Occurs. At. X equals, x equals two because we can say because the integral from two to eight of f of x dx is positive and the integral from negative two to two of f of x dx is negative. So again, that means when you when you start from negative two and you get to two, you decrease overall. Your value decreases, and then when you go from two to eight, your value increases because as you're integrating, you get an overall positive value. See these numbers; these these areas cancel out, but this area here um, causes it to be a more negative than this. I hope I'm not confusing you all, but I I sense this was going to be a t one of the tough for response questions. This red integral overall is negative. There's more negative area, so to speak, in that, but in this overall integral is positive. So the, air, so the value of f gets bigger after two, but before two, it's, always, it's decreasing more. Um, so I hope that helps, but um, let me know if you want me to clear this up because, because again, sometimes um, what they want your answer to be in the form of, can be a little tricky, but I'll be posting the next one coming up soon. So take a look, take a look at that.